Hi everyone, I hope this finds you in good health. Welcome to Amuna Until the Sunset. This week we have a double portion, Behar and Bechukotai. In Behar, we are told that we should only farm our lands for six years in a row. In the seventh year, we take a sabbatical year, a Shemitah year, and let the land rest. The mental picture I have of the biblical Shemitah year is reminiscent of the images that we're seeing so much on our Facebooks and Instagrams lately. Shots of empty New York streets and eerily quiet malls and restaurants. In some, you almost expect to see a tumbleweed rolling past. Coronavirus has sort of induced a Shemitah year for us. Thank God many of us are able to work from home, but the world as a whole, it seems, has entered a Shabbat-like moment of stillness. But a Shemitah year implies an eventual end, intrinsically. It's a cycle. Once the seventh year is over, it's time to jump back in. This pandemic, though, doesn't seem to have an end in sight. Recently, I found an ancient-seeming book in my house, A Treasury of Jewish Folklore. This book was printed in June of 1948, only a month after the State of Israel declared its independence. June 1948 was the first stages of the first Arab-Israeli war, a war that would go on for many more months. As an introduction to the folk tales, Nathan Ozabel, the compiler and editor, writes how Jews have never been allowed to set roots anywhere, being forced to become everlasting wanderers of the highways of the world. And I don't know when Mr. Ozabel wrote this, but with how long publishing takes these days, I have to assume he wrote it months before the State of Israel had been declared. So I was sitting there reading it in the year 2020, the 72nd year of Israel's existence, today to the date, is the 72nd year of Israel's independence, um, I was really overcome with emotion. I wanted to like tell this man, it's okay, we have that place to put down roots now, we're not, we're not wanderers anymore. With this pandemic, we've been uprooted from normalcy. The pain we feel, though, can only be a fraction of the pain that our ancestors felt as they wandered the highways of the world before Eretz Yisrael. For me, knowing our spiritual home exists, no matter how complicated its situation at the moment, gives me a lot of comfort. So may we all emerge from this Shemitah year, refreshed and ready to continue the work of Am Yisrael. Bechukotai. Our second Parsha begins with the earthly blessings that we would receive if we observe the laws of the Torah. Blessings like timely rains, bountiful produce from fields and trees, living in security among others. We may ask the question, why a worldly reward for an otherworldly action? But I don't necessarily see these rewards as being truly material. My dad is a man of many talents, and staying ridiculously busy is one of those talents. He's a surgeon, but spends any free moment tending to our small herd of cattle, and as of the past few years, his hive of honeybees, too. When one of our cows is due to give birth, he worries over them, checking the fields for signs of distress, and he reads endless books about how to best care for his bees. He has given mouth-to-mouth to to a newborn baby bull before, do not tell my mother, and he has even hand-delivered a calf. This past August, my dad and I nursed a close-to-death orphan calf back to health, which was an extremely special experience. We can't leave home for very long because there are living animals that need tending to. Like I said, I don't view these rewards as material. Yes, they occur on the physical earth, but their origin is divine. One of my favorite rewards that Hashem mentions is this promise— I will walk among you and be your God, and you will be my people. When we feel crystal clear raindrops on our skin, when we gather ripe fruit from the seeds that we've planted, literally or figuratively, when we triumph in situations beyond comprehension, this is when we sense the greatest reward, Hashem dwelling among us. These material rewards are only worthwhile because we know Hashem is the source. Though it may feel like we are being abandoned right now, he didn't set us up on earth like an intricate ant farm to be left to its own devices. He is with us, caring for earth as a caring farmer would care for his farm. And just like my father would never abandon his beloved creatures, Hashem will never leave us. As we read in Tehillim, Hashem is my shepherd I shall not want. Hashem roi lo achsar. He is dwelling among us, shepherding us, always. Shabbat shalom. Thank you so much for listening.